Massachusetts to visit our friends at JR Vinagro. Uh, we've never visited them before, so I don't know if we can call them friends yet, but hopefully by the end of the day, we will be able to call them friends. They're working on a high school project right now, which doesn't sound all that cool, except that there's a 6015 and a Komatsu 1100 and a bunch of other machines there. 988 loader. It doesn't really make sense, um, but it apparently makes sense somehow because all that equipment is there. So we're going to go find out how it makes sense. This is a million yards of rock export. So it's it's a total, the, the site itself, it's a million yard cut, and then about 850 is leaving. So like this rock that's up in here, we're just gonna kind of square this corner up and then all this ends up getting crushed. The site gets refilled like anywhere from five to eight feet. So they, they came down and they started way low. But yeah, so here's, yeah, this was January. We just cut the trees. Oh, wow. So that hillside up there came all the way out about 60% across the site. And then it just sloped off and then now we're Wow. Yeah, so that's 60 feet there, another 60 feet to go, so that came all the way out like this. And Maine is doing the blasting? Yeah. Have you crossed paths with them before? Uh, every once in a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're good <laughs> Yeah. They killed it. They, they, so they had their first shot on January 18th, and they were done uh, August 18th. So in eight months, they did 800,000 yards in a, in a freaking neighborhood. It just keeps crazy. So they said it's a once in a career job, you know? Crazy. Yeah. It's yeah, so funny. I told some people I was coming out here and they were just like, figure out how that whole job even works because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, how there's so much equipment in one spot. Yeah. It's all exported. Like it's I definitely. said, it's, well, you'll see when we're out there, but we've dropped, we, we've gotten rid of three 374s and at one point we had five 349s. So, there was some overlap where we got rid of a couple of those and the 374s came, but yeah, we've dropped a lot. We, we had a second 988 up there. It's funny too, because, well, I'll, I'll show you when we're up there why we're doing, because every time someone puts something online, everyone's got an opinion on how we're doing it, but we beat the schedule by like five months, so. No Export, yeah, we had until March to get the rock out of there and we're more or less done. We're just kind of picking away at it now and just, you know, cleaning, cleaning up the last little bit. So even if it takes another month, we're still doing pretty good. Where's all the rock going? Everywhere. A lot, mainly quarries. You know, we're taking it. It's unique because there's near impossible to get a new quarry permitted in Massachusetts. Yeah. And especially as you go from here south, there's a lot of sand. Mm -hmm. So there's a big market for rock because they'll either mix it with the sand to make gravel or quarry. <laughs> they're just about cleaned out. They'll take it and, you know, but you figure that that's a half a year's worth of running for, for some of those guys yeah. and stuff. So it worked out, worked out real good there. But yeah, let's, we'll go out for a walk. July 13th or something put it together and then we got it up here I think early August yeah 
Because when we got the 395, we had it shipped right here, right, right off the boat and it came here. It was a bit of a challenge because the job's so tight. One, they needed room. And two, when a cat machine comes from the dealer, it's freaking cherry. When it comes off the boat and they first put it together, there, there's definitely some, some stuff that they get worked out. Oh, yeah. And they were kind of in the middle of everything. Everyone had a comment and this is scratch and they're dragging this through the rock. And we all as a group decided like probably probably better to get up, you know. Yeah. So we put it together down there, ran it, got, they had a, it actually worked out good because they were able to come out and make some adjustments before it even came to the job. Was it new? Brand new, yep. Brand new. Right from Germany, huh? Yep, yep, brand new. But no, I think that it's working good, you know. And it's, to be honest with you, it's the same. Other than, so the 395, we, we've got a, um, an 85 ton rotator uh, tow truck. We can put the 395 together with that. The 6015 took two cranes. But other than that, it was the same amount of time and the same amount of trucks to move the 395 as the 6015. Is it having 9.7 there, bucket? 11.2. 11.2? Yeah. 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 Jesus. You had to get the big one. Yeah, you got the really big one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's like up in this rock. So, you know, you asked about how the job. How, how we approach the job and everything. So what's unique here is usually in a quarry, you blast, you clean the face out for a week or two, and then you blast again. Here, one, because of schedule, but two, because this job had to be fully double matted. Every shot we took had to have two <laughs> double mats, oh. right? So we had to shoot, let me see if I, I got a good example here. So he's shooting up here, mm -hmm. 60 feet deep, this is already shot, but he's fully muck bound. So he's blasting the rock, but we're not getting that throw that you normally get. Mm -hmm. So when we're going, although it's blasted, 1100 couldn't even touch it. So it took a lot of equipment to get that stuff loosened up and, and to the loading machines. That 6015, it just, it, it doesn't even flinch. And, and so you had to shoot it like that just for the sake of schedule? Yeah, so schedule, you simply, if we had to clean the face out and then shoot again, it, it would be years, it, it would be a lot. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, show you. Double matted because of the neighborhood or? Yeah, it's a city requirement. That's such a pain in the Do you guys have a scale in here or you're just loading the trucks? Well, uh, the uh, loading machine's all the scale. Yeah, scale. yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty snug. To, to help make, make the approach make sense. What'd you guys get the 6015 for? <laughs> just to have it? Just that, just, just to have it. This, um, we do so much, so much different type of work. There's always something to do. Yeah. So here's a good example. So this rock, see how we're digging this face out? We took the first bench off. Mm -hmm. In order for them to double mat this, we always had to leave a road in front in order to put the excavator here to mat. Mm -hmm. So that's the other reason why we were always shooting muck out, you know? And you guys coordinated all this with just main? Yeah. As far as blast plan? Yeah, yeah. Damn. And then, you know, there's there's the houses, there's the houses. How many trucks do you guys have around here? So at the height, our best day was 150. We were about 100. We were at like 100 was an average. And then we settled in at 125. We ended up breaking 150. And then we started as we started. Because we got to leave material to crush, it's that dance of not hauling so much material out that, you know, could you imagine if I had to tell my boss we hauled <laughs> we have to bring material back here, you know. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, so yeah, we broke 575 loads out of here was our best day. So that was like every, can't remember how it broke down, but it was like every 56 seconds a truck was leaving the gate. Um, and then uh, I'd say our average, we were settled into the mid fours pretty consistently, 450 loads a day. And you can only work certain hours. Correct. In your yeah, so we can't. Can't make a no we can't make any noise until seven. Mm -hmm. We finally got the okay. The fuel trucks were allowed to come in at six thirty as long as they didn't back up, and um, we were able to at least let the equipment start running about six forty five. But we yeah. couldn't idle anything up or back anything up. So it was pretty cool. And it, and now that we've gotten rid of so much equipment, it's not the same. But at seven on the dot, it was like a freaking race. Everyone at the exact same time was pulling off because we couldn't bring any trucks on site till seven. So we have a big off-site staging lot. We'd line them all up in the order they came. At 
650, the guy that was in here when you first got here, he'd bring them down like the leader of the band and they'd pull in, we had a time, so they were coming through the gate at seven and all the equipment would have to get out in front of them to get up get up on the benches before the trucks blocked them out. Wow. That was every morning. Yeah, it was freaking, it was crazy. It was, it was freaking awesome. We, we just uh, definitely blessed to, to have gotten this one. This was a cool one. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty unique. It really is. Look at this. Here's, this is in the morning. You know, so we'd have, on days we had 150, we'd have these lined up. We'd have them lined up here, and then we'd have them lined up here as well. You guys are a union shop, right? Yep. And then we had, when we were at the height, I think we, we'd go anywhere from three to four machines loading. We'd have the 88, 374, 374. We used the 349s when we first started, and they just, we were beating the bag out of them, you know? So, on paper, the 349 should be able to load blasted rock into a truck pretty fast, but I'll tell you, it's just, it's, the bigger machines just really made it. Pretty chunky stuff. It, believe it or not, it's, not too bad. it's popcorn, yeah. yeah. It's popcorn. Yeah, look, here's one of them, all the trucks lined up around the pile, wow. all the way down. And we weren't, we're not allowed to stage trucks on the road either. So we'd have to get them all, we'd have to get them all up here. Holy Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And we'd have guys at each, it, it, you know, here directing which truck goes to which machine. And it was just, there you can see three, this one, actually we had four, we had two loaders. We'd have two loaders. We'd always um, add extra machines in the morning to get the first round out. And then after that, cause they were going to different places, they'd split up. So yeah, yeah. So we'd, it would be all hands on deck in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Pictures left. Oh, hey, it was great meeting you. Yeah, really good meeting yeah, you. Thanks for everything. Nice weekend. Good? Yeah, I just need to pee. Well, I was gonna pee by the skid steer, but I guess not anymore. Four potties. Oh. And that is another vi trip. Visit trip. Jerry Vinagro. So, high school project in Waltham, Jerry Vinagro. Thank you to Jerry Vinagro for having us out. Mr. Andrew Cermic, great guy. Been chatting with him on the internet for a few years now. Finally got to meet him, which is cool. Now that we've seen our 1615 for the day, we are gonna go head to Brooklyn. So to drive from Boston to Brooklyn, which is about four and a half hours. At least in theory, it's about four and a half hours. We'll see. We will see. So yeah, we go to Brooklyn and then uh, tomorrow is the Manhattan area, and then we get the hell out of town. So I think this is where we end this video. Unless you want to see four and a half hours driving. Let's open dash cam. Just film the entire four and a half hours. Do oh, you no. think that's a thing on YouTube? Would people watch? Oh, probably. Watch other people just drive? I watch, there's like these motorcycle people, they just put their GoPro on their helmet and they just talk while they ride around, <laughs> and I watch that. Oh, brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our wheels are about to be so clean. <laughs> <laughs>